to when they grow up they want to be strong yeah a lot of people good so tonight's topic if you are aware or if you're not aware is the strong man and tonight we will also remember Abu Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam who is the manifestation of what it is to be strong so today we will talk about what is it to be strong what kind of strong is there? What kind of strong should we be? And what kind of strong did we see on the plains of Karbala? Just to start off, we'll see what strong means. Strong is the person who's able to carry weights or move heavy objects. Strong is the person who's able to perform physically demanding tasks and challenging tasks. Also we find that we refer to things, anything or any person as strong, such as this cloth, if it's able to withstand pressure and force and wear and tear. So that's what it means to be strong. And as people, especially boys and men, we all want to be strong. Everyone, when they want to grow up, they grow up, they want to be strong. One of the reasons we want to be strong is that from a young age, we are shown characters, whether in cartoons or TV or actors, we're shown characters that are strong. I know when I was young, many of you might be too young to know this character, but there was a character, and probably even you might be a bit too young for that. Um, who can firstly guess how old I am? Yeah? 36, okay, good guess. 29, anyone else? 34? 40, okay, I'll go lower. Yes? 28 higher, 17 higher. Yes, sister. 47, lower. 25 higher. You were close to it. Higher, higher. 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 30, okay, good. I'm 30, 30, not 47, not 33, but 30. So when I was young, there was a character called He-Man. How many people know who He-Man is? Yeah? Okay, great. 
So He-Man was a character who was very, he looked very strong and he had a magical sword. And from what I remember, the only toy I ever had was a toy of that He-Man figurine. So I was acquainted with this strong person and naturally I wanted to be strong. And at that time we had a character called Tarzan. Who knows Tarzan? Yeah? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> that one. You know, he was a strong man. And we had someone else called, in my time, um, some of the sisters might remember Popeye. Who remembers Popeye? So Popeye used to um, carry a, I don't even know what it is, but he would always have something in his mouth. It was like a pipe, yeah. But he would put spinach in it, and when he'd put spinach in it, or he'll eat spinach, then he'll become strong. That's right. So ever since we were young, we were exposed to these characters. And in your ages and today, we're exposed to characters such as Batman, Spider-Man, Superman. That's you. And Hulk, the Incredible Hulk, who's big, beefy, no one can mess around with him. So since we're young, we're exposed to these characters that are strong. And today we find even in the movies, well today they're a bit more pansy, but um, previously, maybe 10, 15 years ago, we had the likes of Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, Mr. Olympia for so many years, that incredible physique that he had. Strong body. We had people like Jean-Claude Van Damme who was able to fight his incredible kicks, the martial arts that he knew. We had people like Sly, Sylvester Stallone, Rambo, Rocky, Bruce Lee, those types, strong people. So one of the reasons we like to be strong is because we've been exposed to it. Whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, regardless, we're exposed to it and so we're indoctrinated from a young age to be physically strong and powerful. Yes, who? Imam Ali, salam. we'll get to that. <laughs> I haven't forgotten him. So we find that we're exposed to these people, and so that's why we want to be like them. And so that's why we find that one of the reasons we love strength is because we, from a young age, we're exposed to them, and so we want to be like them. If you ask kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? They'll tell you a series of things, but they'll also say, I want to be strong. <laughs> <laughs> and so you find another reason why we want to be strong is not just because we're exposed to it it's because whether we're men or we're women every single person in the world we have what's called human rights universal inalienable rights that are given to everyone so we find that if we are strong physically strong that we're more able to defend these rights if we're physically strong, people are less likely to pick on us. If we're strong, people are less likely to bully us. We're able to defend our rights more, the rights of others as well. How? That's right. <laughs> so naturally we love those who are strong. We aspire to be strong. And we're inclined towards fighters and warriors because strong implies confidence, self-esteem, safety and protection. We feel safe around them and we feel protected around those strong people, whether they're bodyguards or a person who's a great martial artist. And we find someone like Muhammad Ali. Who knows Muhammad Ali? Yeah, who was he? A boxer. We find someone like Muhammad Ali who was a very strong person and despite him having a bit of a potty mouth, you know, he was very racist at times. He would offend people, he would ridicule people, he would mock people. But at the same time, you find, and of course, he also sh showed great strength in the face of the US government not going to Vietnam to war. But generally, we like him, we look up to him because he was the heavyweight boxing champion of the world. He defeated great giants and goliaths like the name of George Foreman, if you're, afraid, if you're aware of them. That one punch of George Foreman would send you flying, it would break you. He was known to have one of the heaviest punches in the world. 
Muhammad Ali was able to defeat the likes of Joe Fraser. So we're exposed to these people and we like people like Muhammad Ali. And despite, as I said, he was a bit of a potty mouth, he could be offensive and rude. But we see also because of his strength, that position that he had, Salaam Alaikum, the champion of the world. When he became Muslim, he was previously known as Cassius Clay. When he became Muslim and adopted the name Muhammad Ali, we find that so many people became Muslim, not necessarily because he was an uh, honest, kind person. That may have been true, but more because he was a strong character. So we look up to such people. And we find these days there are other types of people who think they're strong, you know, that we call, they're called keyboard warriors, for example. They're strong, they carry keyboards, but they're not that strong. If you go up to them, they might chicken out. But behind the computer scene, they're very strong. They think they're, you know, all that. But that's not the strength I'm talking about here as well. I remember when I was younger, unfortunately, I used to get into a lot of fights. You know, I've been in maybe, and I'm not joking, more than 30 fights on the streets, whether it's a group or one-on-ones, when I was younger. But then when I turned more towards Islam, I realized, obviously, that's not a good thing to hit people for no reason or in fights. That's not the answer. So about in year 12, maybe about 13, 14 years ago, I turned, I saw the beauty of Islam, turned towards it, learned things like patience and all that stuff. And so I remember for a period, there were people that were trying to taunt me online, as I said, keyboard warriors. And some people, they like taunting you or mocking you or whatever online. And then one time I had enough, for two, three years I allowed these people to just taunt me and I was just replying with kindness, you know, trying to learn how our prophet was, how he demonstrated good character. Once I saw him, I told him I've had enough. I grabbed him and he chickened out. And another time, the same person, I saw him, I was driving and he was at a restaurant. And when he saw me, he goes, hey, get out of here. You know, I tried to be all cool. So then I just parked it, it annoyed me. I got out of the car, went up to him, grabbed him by, by the shirt. I said, what's your problem? You know, I'm always gentle and all that. And you find that some people, keyboard warriors, for example, especially, when you, find, when you show a demonstrate a bit of strength, unfortunately, that's only then they, they respect you, which it shouldn't be the case, but that's the law of the world. Thank you. In this world of survival of the fittest, sometimes the fists work. So fortunately or unfortunately, we find that if you're apparently strong, as I said, bodybuilder, or you can fight, it's easier to use your fists, and so you're able to quickly demand respect. But there also seems to be this dichotomy. People, if we think of people who have, who are strong, who know how to fight, usually they're not that, usually there are great people, but usually they're not that great of people. They're not gentle people. They're not kind people as much. And usually we find that the people who busy themselves in studies, or they're nice and neat, you know, they tend to be more timid. They tend to be not as physically strong. And we can see that reflective of some of the people are, you know, that we um, see in the day-to-day -day lives. And so we find that also those who are physically strong, because they're easily able to get what they want using their anger, they're quick-tempered, and they're able to use their fists. So what is the best way? What kind of strength should we be aspiring towards? So we find that the father of a faith called Taoism, Lao Tzu, 500 years before Christ, he said a very beautiful quote. He said, He who conquers others is strong. He who conquers himself is mighty. And in the same line, we find that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam salawat. He said the strong person is not the one who can wrestle others and put them to the ground. But the strong person is the one that is able to wrestle and control his tongue. 
and able to control their anger. That is the true test of strength. And we find that these people, these characters such as the Prophet, when they say these things, they actually demonstrated it as well. The Prophet being a man, he was obviously uh, physically strong as well if you read into history. But we find, for example, when he was in Mecca, he would teach and preach the message and people would reply very rudely to him. And there's one instance there that many of you may have be, be familiar with, that a woman, as he's walking by, throws rubbish at him and throws gunk at him and there's filth in that. And the Prophet, if it's any of us, imagine what we would do. At least we'd be like, Oi, what's your problem? What are you doing? Do you want to meet my fist? Or you might peck something at them? And this was an easy target, it was a woman. But what did the Prophet do? He carried on. He knew that the best way to show strength was kindness. And the story continues where she became sick. And you should all read up on it. It's a beautiful story. But it's just a demonstration of, of how he was able to control himself and his anger. And some people might say, well, that was, that's easy. Anyone who's in a weak position, his message wasn't spread out that much. And it was a woman that's pretty low back then in pre-Islamic Arabia. But first of all, anyone... You know, if they get thrown rubbish, imagine what you'd do. But then we also see, and we spoke about a few nights ago, when Prophet did reach a level of power and leadership. He had won the battles, and it was time for him to return to Mecca after he was kicked out. He was thrown out, and basically he was threatened with his life, that when, some may know the story, when Imam Ali slept in the bed, and so he left, he migrated to Medina. So he returned to Mecca, and now the people around him, they were happy, we can get our revenge. Now we're in power. Now we can show them who's boss. And the Meccans were, f were frightened. They were shaking, you know, what's going to happen now? Muhammad has returned. But the Prophet, and we mentioned a few nights ago, that he returned and forgave everyone. He returned and embraced everyone. And usually sometimes when we think we're doing a good act and we want to forgive someone, we'll still make them look bad, we'll humiliate them, we'll remind them. What did the Prophet do? He didn't even allow them to be humiliated. He told the companions that, for example, the house of this enemy is safe. Whoever is there is safe. So we saw that there's emphasis on the inner strength. We find that there's a great emphasis on the strength of the mind, strength of the soul, strength of the character. We find that in narrations and history, that after a, after a battle, imagine a war has taken place, how tiring it is, how many people get killed, how, how many people get injured, so the companions came back. There are bodies on the floor, dismembered people, the, the, the companions came back, they won the, the, the war, and they came back, they're happy. And the Prophet congratulated them, they said. He said, congratulations on triumphing and winning on your victory over this small jihad. The companions looked at him and said, Ya Rasulullah, what do you mean small jihad? We just had bodies flying. We had so many people killed, so many people injured. There are, have been legs cut off. There are people that have dislocated their joints. There are people who are bloody. Look at the bodies on the floor. I've never been so exhausted. What do you mean it's a small struggle, a small battle, a small fight? The Prophet replied that indeed this is a small battle. The true and greater battle and the greater jihad is the jihad of the nafs. The jihad of the soul, the ongoing struggle that we have inside between right and wrong, the ongoing struggle we have inside whether to lie or whether to tell the truth, the ongoing struggle we have inside whether to earn an honest living or be a bit dodgy, the ongoing lifelong struggle that we have inside and Prophet Muhammad called this the great jihad, the great struggle. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. 
So as I said, and we noticed that a lot of people who are physically strong usually, because it's easier for them to get their way, and if someone looks at them the wrong way, for example, you know, we always see it, they're quickly like, whoa, 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 you know? And they, they, we find that people who can fight or whatever, they're usually quick-tempered or they're troublemakers sometimes. As I said, not all of them, but it is a generality. And on the other hand, we also find, as I said, those people who are more focused on their studies, who are nice people, kind people, they tend not to worry too much about being physically strong. But let's look at our role models. What were they like? We all love our role models because they manifested the greatest of virtues. They embodied patience, they embodied honesty and uprightness, the greatest of moral character. They were honest, as I said. They were great people, they were beautiful people, they were kind people, they were intelligent people, they were smart people. They were the greatest embodiment of rahma, of generosity, of charity. They were warm people that you'd feel comfortable with them. They were balanced people. But we also find that they were not only the masters of the self-struggle, jihad al-nafs, but they were also not only masters of jihad al-akbar, the internal struggle. They were good, kind people, which we see many people around as they're kind. But they're pushovers. The poor guys, you know, you do something to them, they, won't, they don't have the capacity to defend themselves. Yet we find our role models, they were not only strong internally, they were strong externally. Unfortunately, we see that there, there, there has been this culture that it's, if you pick one, you neglect the other. If you pick the other, you neglect that. But there's this culture in Islam and our role models that they were both physically strong and they were mentally strong. We find that, for example, earlier I read from the Quran in the story of Moses that Moses helped out these ladies and the ladies reported to their father who was the prophet. And in the quest to tell the father how great a person Moses was, what did she say? She said, Oh my father, employ him. Indeed, the best of those who can work is the strong one, the faithful one. al al Amin. So we see even in the Quran, we find that there's emphasis on the physically strong and the faithful. Definitely, without doubt, as I said, what's more important is the internal struggle. Be good people, be kind people, the struggle of the self. But it's as important to be strong people as boys and girls. If we don't have that strength within us, we don't have that confidence to example like Lady Zainab to go in the face of oppression and the oppressors. Imagine the biggest of tyrant like Hitler, for example, and a woman comes up to him and says, you are this, you are that. That's how strong Lady Zainab was. That's how strong Sayyidah Fatima was if you read her speech. And we all see our role models, Moses alayhi salam, all our prophets, the Anbiya, the Awliya, they were strong people internally and externally. And we see now, for example, who's the strongest one that comes to mind? Imam Ali alayhi salam. Immediately when we think of a brave warrior, a fighter, we see that it's Imam Ali. We pride ourselves. That in the battle of Khaybar, that there was a gate, it was so heavy that tens of people weren't e able to just move it. And history tells us that Imam Ali single-handedly removed it. That we find that in battles, when he was just a young boy, there were giants. Imagine the biggest of fighters in UFC, for example. They're not necessarily Muslim. You know, for example, my personal favorite, all-time favorite fighter is a person called Fidor, if you know him, Fidor Emelianenko. Why? Because not only he was a great, one of the all-time best fighters, but he was such a gentle guy. He'd walk in the ring and smile at them. Everyone's like, Rrr. and he'd just be like this. He was a bold, fat man like me. I still have my hair.